on a horror movie podcast like ours, we actually do spend a good amount of time talking about horror books. Whether we're bringing on some authors or we're just talking about some books we've read. So in this top 10, we're going to do something a little special. Top 10 horror movies based on books. Which aren't they all? <laughs> but, um, or all based on true events of some kind. Right. Admittedly on the show, I've said that you have definitely, you're definitely the reader between the two of us. Yeah. So it makes sense that you would make, or you would pick something like this. Yeah, I thought this would be a lot of fun. So I was just like, let's see what we could do with this list. It actually makes sense considering how half of our show is interviewing authors. We might as well give some of our favorite uh, ones that were based off as such. Yeah. And our only uh, caveat is we could only use an author one time. So this list isn't going to be like seven to eight Stephen King movies. Yeah, we had to say that right off the cuff. Like, all right, only one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With your, so I I think that I I was able to choose some that, yeah, you know, didn't that wouldn't make a usual list. I try not to repeat answers, um, yeah, that I've done in a previous. Top I tens. think a uh, couple of mine, you know, or something that we said on a list here or there, but I got two that uh will be up to you whether or not to call bullshit on, and there's like one or two that I had to uh, follow up and make and, and see if they were based on books. Because uh, okay. off the top of my head, I could only think of a couple, and then I, I had to kind of be like, "Oh, that was based off of it." Oh, so I, I usually not to like. I usually don't like to do research when I do these. I like to just have it off the top of my head. Yeah. You want to get us kicked off? All right. So my number ten, the woman in black, which the book is titled the same, the woman in black by Susan Hill. And, and uh, do you want to give your explanation? Then I'll give mine. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, I'm not huge on ghost movies, mm -hmm. but this one I thought was always a fun watch, yeah. and it stars Elijah Wood, I think. Dan or Daniel Radcliffe. I knew it was one of those two, and I was... Just, uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad that I'm not the only one that gets those two. Uh, yeah, it's confused. one of those two, and I was just like, I'm going to throw a name out, but yeah. It's Daniel Radcliffe, and if either of you two, for some reason, is listening to this, make a, a buddy movie together, please. That way, we I, I desperately want an Elijah Wood, Daniel Radcliffe buddy movie. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. So, it's just a good ghost horror movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw uh, it. It was, a, yeah. it, was a, it was okay. I'm not I'm not super into ghost ones as well, but it was yeah. okay. I remember watching it being like, it was all right. It was, yeah. I'm, I'm glad to see Daniel exploring other things instead of yeah. just coasting off of... Harry Potter Harry. fan. Um... My number 10 was Winnie the Pooh, 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 Blood and Honey by Helen Milne. Now, the, based off of the Winnie the, Pooh, uh, Winnie the Pooh. Pooh books. Now, I haven't seen Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, but I wanted to put it on here because I am all for this era of bringing oh, uh, beloved children's classics and making them homicidal. So, uh, so I thought about putting that on my list, but yeah. I was just like, I haven't seen it, so I'm not, but... Uh... I, I, I haven't seen it. Looks it looks like I, it'd be such a fun movie. I I haven't seen it, but based on if if this is the direction that a lot of horror movies are going, they're like, oh, Rugrats? Hmm. Why don't we make them into psychotic uh hills have eyes killers or so you yeah. know what I mean? Like I'm all for it. I'm down with that. You can touch my beloved children's classics if you're gonna do something weird like that with them. Yeah. But goosebumps. Uh or no, sorry, uh, but uh Winnie the Pooh. Um yeah, I, I don't mind losing the spot because I just wanted to put it on there. <laughs> yeah, we at least got to shout it out, but... At least have to shout it out, but neither of us have seen have it. seen it, so I don't think we put it on the list, so... I knew I was going to lose it, but I don't mind. I just needed a shout out anyway. Right. So. so our number 10 is The Woman in Black. Which is a solid movie. I think it was okay. Yeah. So what is your number 9? I actually let it slip when I said Goosebumps um, a second ago because it's Goosebumps, the book, uh, the movie. Based off okay. of the series of books. Now, I was always more of a um, scary stories to tell in the dark uh, fan. Yeah, but, the movie sucks. But the movie, but I can't give it to it's a, a scary stories to tell in the dark because I they the, the movie had so much potential and they threw it away. Yeah, in my opinion. So Goosebumps, Goosebumps. I definitely read. I, I read uh, like dozens of the Goosebumps yeah. book growing up. I think we all uh, did. I read so many. And. Like, there's days where I just sit and read one book in one sitting. My favorites were always the choose-your-own-adventure ones. 
Yeah, those are a lot of fun. I, I, I tried to do my own. Uh, sorry, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm about to go down memory lane and bore you all. So, uh, yeah, Goosebumps. And if I'm comparing the two movies, uh, the f- the first uh, Goosebumps is goofier, but I think it captured the tone a little bit better than Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Okay. Fair behind number nine, I went complete opposite direction. Show some love to Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds, based on the book The Birds by uh, Daphne du Maurier. I think that yeah. I could actually, I think I could actually argue this one. <laughs> um, the Goosebumps. Um, because we, yeah, I think you and I both have have uh, been on recording saying, "Master of Suspense," Alfred Hitchcock, his movies. I'm sure they were great at the time. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I just want to show him some love, but yeah, but I mean, I think the birds, I'd much rather watch Goosebumps right now than The Birds. I mean, The Birds, and no disrespect to Alfred Hitchcock, because I think we've I've said it before, yeah. but because my old film teacher was the biggest. Alfred Hitchcock fan, but yeah, um, I mean, I like Psycho more, more than Birds. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, so is that a unanimous? Yeah, we can give it to Goosebumps. Yeah, we're, we're gonna give number nine to Goosebumps, which is the only podcast that will ever put Goosebumps well, above the Birds by Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> we got to stand out somehow. I'm happy with that. How about your number eight? All right, my number eight is Let the Right One In. Oh, okay. Uh, The novel is uh, a Swedish novel, same title, by John Archivide Lindquist. I'll I'll, I'll accept it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I I have no idea how to pronounce his name, but yeah, I think for a vampire movie, it has such an interesting concept. Mm -hmm. And it is a, like, fantastic watch with a great plot twist, so Mm -hmm. I think it definitely deserves to be number eight. Uh, what I had for my number eight was Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Um, not the black and white version. It was the one directed by Kenneth Branagh. Okay. Which, now if you look at the score on that thing, it's it's pretty low. I think it's actually in the 30s or 40s. Yeah. Um, I don't know, though. I think maybe it's just because it's Kenneth Branagh and Helena Bonham Carter and De Niro. Uh, and they're, you know, all solid actors. Um, I have issues with the movie, yes, but I think I think the actors are likable enough that it, it kept me around. That I, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll still watch. I still like the actors. Okay, and, but seeing how yeah. passive I am like that, I am inclined to give you "Let the Right One In" because yeah. uh, that's why Mary Shelley's Frankenstein is higher on the list. Yeah, "Let the Right One In" seems like good fit number eight. I I don't mind that you you but because yeah. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. It's 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 okay. I I, I just wanted yeah. to put it out there. Yeah, it's, it has to be mentioned, but yeah. But and it's not even the most famous of the adaptations. It's actually one of the no. least uh, least yeah. rated. But I like it. All right. What is your number seven? A uh, girl with the dragon tattoo by Stieg Larsson or Stieg Larsson. Right. Uh, that one's a, a thriller, dark. Uh, have you seen it? I might. I don't think i remember it no it's a david fincher movie so if you like david fincher and all those kind of movies you know it's going to be dark it's going to be uh you know the world is going to be harsh okay yeah uh so again solid acting uh yeah. i i enjoyed it it was it was a it was a good time yeah i mean either way i think we're gonna have to put a start on this one because this is where my stephen king selection's at with uh into the tall grass into the tall grass Yes. I haven't seen that one. It's a Netflix original movie, but I mean, I think the casting's perfect, and yeah. I just enjoyed the ambiance of this movie the entire time. And it's just being lost and not being able to find your way out of a cornfield. Doesn't sound like it'd be terrifying, but kind of is. Yeah, so we'll have to definitely put a pin in this one. Yeah. Uh, until we get down a little further into the list. Yeah, because I figure your Stephen King's going to be coming up. That he's uh, yeah. at least on your list once, so yeah. Spoiler though, even though we said we mentioned Stephen King, he isn't my number one. So, uh, okay. but but we do acknowledge we. I mean, it goes with sound. We love Stephen King. So yeah, but only one author per franchise. Yeah. So put a pin in that and go to number six. All right. My number six, Hellraiser, which is the Hellbound but- Heart, which is also my number but- six. 
Shut up. It is exactly my number six. It's exactly <laughs> where it needed to be. <laughs> Get out of here. I was like, don't. I was like, all right. I was trying to determine. I was like, I don't think he. I don't think Hellbound Heart needs to be in the top five, but it no. needs to at least be lower than eight and seven. So I'm going to yeah. put it right here at six. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I think we're. I think we're slowly starting to take on each other's like yeah. mindsets. So. I mean, the movie is good. So yeah, it's. We need like, to explain why. I mean, it's it's if, if you if you're listening, you know what Hellraiser is. So yeah. And, Sam uh, Head's great. Yeah. So. All right. Cool. Uh, that ha- or, I think that's only happened the two times it's happened. No, it's happened three times, times. that we've this had is the third time. Yeah, I think that it, that we've had the exact same number. <laughs> yeah, and that was Kathy Bates for our favorite actress. Yeah, it was. I think. Uh, oh, it was Aliens. Sigourney yeah. Weaver was both of our number threes. Yeah, and Hellraiser is our number six. Yeah, I like it. I love it. Now, what is our number five? Five for you? Usually for me, number five is kind of easy to put. It, it's uh, one that's not awful, or not well. None of these are awful, but no. not my favorite. But yeah. not, not, not you know, so bad. My number five. I don't. I know we're not going to match because I know you haven't seen this movie. Let's see. Uh The Exorcist. Oh yeah, you're right. Well, but based on the book by William Peter Blatty. Well, you're going to take this one because um, my number five, because it is exactly where it needs to be, right there in the middle, would be I Am Legend. I'm okay. I know it was panned by a lot of audiences. I thought it was okay. It was okay, yeah. especially if you do the alternate ending. Yeah. Um, and it did make me tear up. That dog dying scene makes me tear yeah. up. I remember going to the theater, and this is back when Will Smith was in everybody's good graces. Yeah. And uh, See, I was thinking about I Am Legend on my list, but I had it like 9 or 10 if it would have fit in there. I think 5 is kind of where it needs to be if anything i i uh thinking about it now uh i might have made it i might have put it at seven if i were to rethink the list but i already wrote it down so <laughs> uh but n- number five the thing is with number five for me it's not even my i'd like a couple of the other ones yeah. more but when i think five i think right in the middle and that's just kind of how i feel with iron yeah. legend it's just right in the middle yeah. I mean, X, I still can't believe you haven't seen The Exorcist. How about That's My Homework and Your Homework is um, Jacob's, uh, Jake, Ladder. Jacob's Ladder. Yeah. Which, that's a little teaser into what we're going to be doing next season. Yeah. We're, we're going to be giving <laughs> each other homework assignments. Yeah. And then having full episodes. <laughs> Just, what did you think? Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and give it to you. There's no way I'm going to argue yeah. against The Exorcist <laughs> with <laughs> I Am Legend. Yeah. All right. So my number four, I have... Uh, Audition, okay. a Japanese movie based on the Japanese book, same title, mm-hmm. author is Ryu uh, Murakami. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's... Because I know it's a hard watch. watch for a lot of people. It is a hard watch. It's kind of, it was kind of like, uh, I'd say it's kind of in like the realm of uh, torture porn. You have to ha- film, yeah. you have to be the of a certain caliber to kind of accept that yeah. kind of, like, that those kinds of torture or yeah if you could watch hostel you should be able to handle this yeah yes and i think it it has a better story than the hostel movies anyway so Mm -hmm. four felt like a good place for this movie uh number four is one that uh you may or may not call bullshit on uh but i said werewolf by night uh from the marvel comics werewolf by the marvel comics it was the special they did for netflix it was a one-hour movie special it was all black and white um based off of the uh comics of werewolf by night of marvel i haven't seen that it's and there's a reason why i put it at number four i'm getting marvel fatigue uh, i'll i'll yeah. be straight up right now that i was with marvel from the beginning like yeah. i remember growing up on the sam raimi spider-man and as it grew into the x-men which eventually led to iron man and the mcu and blah 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 yeah I'm 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 kind of tired of Marvel right now. If I'm gonna be honest, <laughs> like it's yeah. I mean, uh, I, what was the last Marvel movie I've seen? Probably Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. I've seen them all because it's a, it's a tradition. Me and my dad go to see all the Marvel movies. Yeah. But between that and the series, and you have to watch all of it in order to know what's going on in the next movie. Yeah. Werewolf by Night was such a refreshing departure from that. It was just a one hour movie special on netflix it was black and white 
it was supposed it was supposed to give it that old timey black and white old horror feel. Okay. Um, and I was completely surprised. I think Marvel needs to do more of that. So that's why it's on my number four because it was a pleasant surprise. You know what? We've never had any type of Marvel on our list. So I'll give you this one. I did do a Shutter shout out for Swamp Thing. That was a bad movie though. <laughs> Uh, I hear they're re- Swamp Thing's show is actually pretty good, even though it only had one season. I heard that they're bringing it back, or there's rumors about it coming back. Yeah, no, but the show was pretty good. Uh, so you'll give it to my werewolf by night? Yeah, I'll give it to werewolf by night. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, it's I think that Marvel needs to stop doing all this interconnected stuff. Go back to making just self-contained stories. Yeah, I mean when it first started out, it was fun. Yes. Like, the first Avengers movie was so much fun. Mm-hmm. I remember seeing that. Theater. It was an event. I remember yeah. the first Avengers coming out. It was an event. Every I remember where and what theater I saw it in. And yeah. It was, yeah. It's... Well, like, it was still an event in game. Yeah. That, like, that was, now, that was an event. <laughs> yeah, they built up to that, and then they... Yeah. I, it's hard to... They hit such a peak that it's hard to stay there. I think that oh Marvel talk for yeah. a hot minute real quick. Right. Um yeah, I I think a little continuity between movies is okay. Yeah. But I do like the fact that I think that they should in fact I think DC should do that. If DC yeah. wants to compete with Marvel, do self-contained stories of your characters that you don't have to worry about meeting like yeah. oh well how is this going to connect to this one? Just don't. Just let them have their own stories. Yeah. And, that, and then that way, if another actor is like, oh, you know who would be great as so-and-so? Uh, uh, Jason Momoa. Well, he already played Aquaman, so uh, he can play Lobo in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. A little Marvel tangent. Yeah. Uh, but thank you. And what was yours again? Uh, audition. Oh, Audition? Oh, yeah. okay. All so right. now we're down to the top three. Yeah, put on your boxing gloves for yeah. the next three. All right, so what are your top three? Oh, yeah, I forgot that's how we do it. My number three is my Stephen King pick. Okay. And that's Dr. Sleep. All right. Uh, my number two is Red Dragon by Thomas Harris, the prequel to Silence of the Lambs. Okay. And my number one pick is... Oh, wait. Oh, shit. <laughs> did, 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 I, uh, did I erase it? One hot second, please. All right. Oh, no, I, I had the right... I had the right list. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Fuck it. Whoever's job it is to edit this is going to have a fun time with this bit. All right. So my number three is Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice. Okay. My number two is Red Dragon, the prequel to Silence of the Lambs by Thomas Harris. All right. And my number one is Dr. Sleep. All right. So my number three is Jaws by Peter Benchley. Okay. My number two is Silence of the Lambs by Thomas Harris. We got Silence of the Lambs up against Red Dragon? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. My number one, The Ring by uh, Koju Suzuki. Oh, uh, uh, The Ring? Yeah. yeah. I put Ring number one because I don't think we've ever talked about The Ring, which is surprising because mm-hmm. it is such a good movie. Do you, do you like both versions? Yeah, bo- both are really good. It's been a, it's been a hot minute uh, yeah. since I've seen that. That was another two thousand. Some, a lot of two. There was so much two thousands like, but that only a couple made it through to become classics, and The Ring was yeah. one of them. Yeah, good pick. Yeah. Uh, so let's start from number three then. Number three. <laughs> In all honesty, I think I fucked up my list. I think Interview was probably my number three, but you know what? I already said what I said. I'm gonna stick by it. So Interview with the Vampire against think- Jaws. Interview with a Vampire uh-huh. is it's one also, uh, a classic from like the time we grew up. It is one of the few um, because, like I said, Dave's the reader, yeah. so um, it's funny because I've read my share fair uh, my fair share of, of books for things that aren't on this list. Yeah, but uh, Anne Rice, which is a it, this Interview with a Vampire, is a pretty thick book, and for somebody who's not a r- real big reader, that was kind of an accomplishment for me. Yeah, and. Uh, it's it's good. It's a pretty faithful adaptation. Yeah, I never read the book, but the movie is really good. Plus, well, I was I was bummed out when I heard that she had died. I believe it was yeah. last year. But uh, yeah, it's it follows traditional vampire like lore. 
Yeah. Which, and I think it does it very well and tells a very good story. And I think I would go with Interview with the Vampire because I feel like we've had Jaws on a couple lists. So yeah, I know, but it's still. I mean, just because we had them on the list, yeah. I mean, this should be argued. I mean, they, it does. It did make your three. I, I mean, it's the classic creature feature that scared people out of swimming in the oceans it kind of created a wave so like it's something i wish i would have been around when it first came out Mm -hmm. it has that type of effect yeah there there are a couple of movies that i wish that i could have gone back and been in the theater when they came out as much there there are a couple of movies that you could have picked that are heavy hitters that i could have probably put up against interview with a vampire yeah. But I mean, Interview with a Vampire is one of a bunch of it's not the only faithful vampire movie. Yeah. But when you think shark movie, the very first thing that you think of is Jaws. Is Jaws yeah. So I have to, uh, you know, I can't argue against that. So I have to give it to Jaws. OK, so number three is Jaws. Sorry, I'm surprised you, you didn't put favorite. Lost Boys on the list. Uh, Lost Boys isn't my favorite vampire movie. Really? Huh. Interview Interview with a Vampire is my favorite vampire movie. OK. I, and it's and, and it, the thing is about it, it is a very dialogue heavy movie, which is probably yeah. why I like it. It's just him telling his story. Yeah. Um, I, I saw the first episode of the series that came out. I don't think it's for me. No. For one thing, and this is going to sound weird when I first say it. Yeah. Is that Louis? Have you seen Interview? You've seen yeah, Interview. I've seen, yeah, I've seen it. Is that Louis in the series is a black man, which initially is not a big deal, but in the move in the. But in the book, Louis owned slaves in America. <laughs> he was a he was a New Orleans uh, slave, slave owner. owner. Yeah, I think that would have been a little difficult to <laughs> uh, to to write for. Yeah, um, it just seems like such a weird change to make when it shows his, they didn't really his, look yeah. into the source material when well, making the series. It's it's and, and it feels like it takes place in a different time in New Orleans, which is fine. And, and and I actually think that it should. If you wanted to tell the story like this, fine, you could have that, but just don't call it interview with a, interview with a vampire. Yeah, you could have your vampire movie, fine. Um, in fact, you can tell it from a different standpoint. But I think I just thought that bit was a little weird. And, yeah. And they made Louis and uh, Lestat like actual lovers, which it's kind of implied that they yeah. are, but it's pretty much out in the open in this one. So right. I mean, yeah. that probably bugs a lot of people. That part doesn't bug me. No. I hope people don't take that out of context. Well, my problem with the thing is Louis Black. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, no the problem is they didn't really research the source material. Yeah. But again, that's only from one episode. The rest of the yeah. series could be great for all I know. Yeah. Number two. Number two, Red Dragon versus Silence of the Lambs. Oh, uh, it was like fate. Uh, yeah. The prequel versus... Um, I don't think Red Dragon gets enough love. Red Dragon's a good movie. Yeah, but... It's not as good as Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like, oh. I mean, I can't really defend. I, I mean, I wanted to put Silence of the Lambs on there, but Anthony Hopkins was, I think, already my number one for actors. Yeah. Wasn't he? Wasn't he my number one? He might have been, yeah. He, he was definitely he was in the top a, three. Yeah, he was. And while Ray Fiennes does a fantastic job, um, it's, you know, damn it. Just, hey, Anthony, why is Anthony Hopkins got to be so good for? Right. Um, I, I do got to give it to interview, even though I probably have watched Red Dragon about as many times. Yeah. I just got finished with like a Silence of the Lambs, Red Dragon, and uh, the sequel Hannibal. Well, I just got yeah. kind of got finished watching the the trilogy. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's that I haven't done that in a couple of years. It's something I'm probably do to you sometime soon. Yeah, so it's 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 a solid. If you sit down and watch it from Red Dragon to Hannibal, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. a nice little watch. Yeah, so, I'll give it to Hannibal. So what? Fuck it. All right. So number two is Silent of the Lambs. We were both in the same vein. Yeah, and now the number one Doctor Sleep against the Ring. Now, when we had to pick, we knew that we were going to have to choose our favorite Stephen King ones, right? Yeah. So, Doctor Sleep, I, I forget how long ago did it come out? A couple of years. Yeah, about two years, I think. When I heard that they were making a Doctor Sleep movie, I groaned because I thought that they were just all they wanted to do was just make a sequel to The Shining. 
Yeah, you didn't realize Stephen King wrote. Uh, I didn't realize that he actually wrote the story. Yeah. And it has a lot of stuff that I like more than The Shining. A, yeah. a, a better child actor. They recreated the bar scene again, except for it was Danny Torrance this time talking, which I thought was a, yeah. a, just, a, just a great addition to the movies that he's basically yeah. getting served by his father. Because the guy, yeah. the guy who, they, I guess they couldn't get Jack Nicholson, so they found somebody who looked enough like him. Yeah. I just liked it a lot more than I, I thought it was a good arc for, for Danny too. Yeah. I think yeah. In, in some instances, I even like it more than The Shining. I'm there with you. Like, Dr. Sleep is a great movie. And, yeah. uh, and the ring, but the ringu, ringu. Yeah. It's your number one. I mean, this is something that kind of created its own genre mm-hmm. of like, it is a ghost movie. But it's so different than your typical type ghost movie. It's a ghost movie that I've, I think I've said that once it hit theaters, a lot of people tried to create the same thing. Like the aesthetic yeah. of the actual tape and, and, yes. and having creepy stuff that a lot of people tr- thought, oh, this is where horror is going. We just need to show weird shit. Yeah. We just had this conversation on the previous podcast we recorded. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of started that, but the way they did it actually makes sense. Yes, and because it's only when you're watching the tape. It's not yeah. throughout the entire movie. Yeah, and like the creepy phone call coming it's, out of your TV screen. As much as I appreciate you uh, coming to the defense of my pick, The Ringo was never a movie that I really got into, so it's not yeah. something I can necessarily say, oh, I mean, I can recognize it as a classic. It it, yeah. it, it definitely influenced pop culture to where yeah. a lot of people were trying to, like even now, you know, the Samara Morgan creature yeah. is a very recognizable one. Yes. Even if it wasn't my cup of tea. Yeah. I just felt like it's just a movie we surprisingly never have talked about on the podcast, so Which is- why not, yeah. Now, I will say, admittedly, with my pick, as much as I do yeah. like it, I do think that the ending was a little too forced. Forced nostalgia. We're going to take it back to the, you know, we're going to go back to the Overlook. We're going to go back and revisit all the stuff. Like, remember this, guys? Now, I don't know if that happened in the yeah. book, but that that seemed a little forced. Like, you guys love The Shining, right? Well, here's the Overlook again. And, oh, you guys remember this ghost? Well, here they are again. So I will admit they did. It did feel a little bit pandery to the end. Yeah, I get that. I like it, but I can yeah. understand why people would find it pandering. So how are we going to determine this one? It's, uh, this one would uh, affect number seven if we give it to Dr. Sleep and then... And who is Dr. Sleep up against? Uh, Dr. Sleep is up against the ring. At one no, I mean, I mean the other Stephen King. Uh, at seven, I... I have Into the Tall Grass against... I forgot what your seven was. My number seven was Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. No. So we do need to have a Stephen King thing on here. Yes. Um, it just comes to the point of which one. It just comes to the point of which... Well, I, I haven't seen Into the Tall Grass, so I don't know if it's any good yeah. or not. Would this... You think this might be the one... Well, no, because we have to do number... I was going to say, we can put our number one up for vote on Insta, but we need yeah. to know what number seven was. I'll give number one to Dr. Sleep and then seven to Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. I was going to say, because if mine is yeah. number seven, then mine's also going to be number one. Well, yeah, I'm good with that. Are you all right with that? Yeah, I'm good with that. Dr. Sleep, in, in, in a sea of movies of Stephen King, where you have The Shining, Misery was going to be on my list, but the reason I didn't put Misery yeah. is because I actually like the book more. Um, uh, it, yeah, we, you know... Yeah. You'd have to talk to Sleeper into the tall grass. Of, yeah, of all those classics, I don't think anybody's going to say Dr. Sleep and into the tall grass. So yeah. I, I appreciate your generosity. <laughs> what, is, what, is our, what is our list then? What's, what's our big top 10 books? The Books of Body Bag podcast based yeah. on, or the movies based on books. Okay, so at number 10, we have The Woman in Black. Mm-hmm. Number nine, we have Goosebumps. Number eight is Let the Right One In. Number seven is Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Number six is Hellraiser. That was our uh, our collective one that we, yeah. Yeah, number five is The Exorcist. Number four is Werewolf by Night. Number three, we got Jaws. 
number two is Silence of the Lamb, and then number one is Doctor Sleep. I think that we're actually pretty even. I, th- I think yeah. that's pretty split. Yeah, I think so, yeah. It's like four each, and then including the uh, collective one that we got. Yeah. I'm actually surprised, because I didn't think about this movie until we started recording. Uh-huh. That we didn't put Fear Street anywhere on the list. We ha- we might have to redo the list. Jeez. Uh, Fear well, Street. I forgot about Fear Street, and that's but that's an R.L. Stein uh, yeah. thing. I mean, we could take out Goosebumps, put in Fear Street. <laughs> I'm cool with that, actually. Yeah. Sorry, Goosebumps, but R.L. Stein, you still stay in, but we're replacing you with Fear Street, because that was actually yeah. legitimately good, and I feel better. Fear Street has the tone that Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark should have had. Yeah. If they, if they, if the people who made Fear Street made Scary Stories and Tell in the Dark, Scary Stories and Tell in the Dark would have been an awesome movie. All right. Uh, enough ranting about that. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, Fear Street toys can have a special place in our hearts on this podcast. So Number one. Yeah. <laughs> is our vi- so, yeah, We got to go back. I keep, we keep saying it, but we got to go back and re-review it. Yeah. As actual people who know how to like kind of somewhat navigate a podcast. Yeah. I mean, I haven't watched them in a while, but. I enjoyed it for the three part series, yeah. I actually I think I had it playing when we recorded our last uh <laughs> our our last uh, top ten. Yeah. I think I had that playing on in the background. Oh yeah, because I had mentioned uh, her her friend that I liked. Yeah. Uh, who should have been the main character. Yeah. But that was another top ten. Whenever we come to the end of these things, it's all it's always a bummer, but it's always like, Well, we're gonna do it again. Yeah. We'll but be with doing a whole, some more of these, yeah. But with a whole new like criteria, because we're always yeah. trying to do something different. Always evolving. Always evolving the podcast, even if our tastes don't. Yeah. <laughs> but good list. I think this is the last one, so uh, we don't have to do another one. The next uh, the next special thing will be for uh, next season's viewers to decide and yeah. listen to. So have a good week, everybody. Peace, everybody, and thanks for sticking with us. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to Body Bag Podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe and leave us a comment as to what you'd like to hear us review or any horror movie topics you'd like to hear us rant and rave about. And while you're at it, you can find us on Twitter at Body Bag Pod and on Instagram at Body Bag Podcast. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.